The state's prevailing wage law requires that contractors doing any public project over $400,000, which these days means almost any project, uh, effectively have to pay a union level wage. Do you support that law? And if so, uh, should it be adjusted so towns can undertake more projects without having to pay the prevailing wage, thereby saving local taxpayers money? You know, uh, Paul, I think the threshold needs to be changed. I, I'm not, I'm not going to argue that. But on the other side of that, I'm going to argue that a prevailing wage is a wage that a family can live on. It's a wage that allows someone to take care of their children, to be able and go out, maybe a little entertainment, have a home. It's not like a, a bad thing. I understand that the towns struggle because when they're doing a project, they have to pay prevailing wage. And as I said, we could raise the threshold. But I would also point out to you that when you're not paying that prevailing wage and they're contracting out, you're not sure the quality of the work that you're getting. And we can talk about a bridge in North Stonington and something that happened there. And we can talk about a bunch of other things throughout the state where if you're not paying the prevailing wage and you're not dealing with a contractor that has to be above board, you can have incidences where the work that's being done, and I know there's some that are just completely outrageous, uh, happen. So it's a very difficult question, and it's a question that we're facing today throughout our country when we're talking about the minimum wage. When you're talking about two people working minimum wage and they can't afford an apartment in Hartford that's not more than 30% of their income, you have a problem, and that's across the country. That's not just Connecticut. So when we're talking about paying prevailing wage, we're talking about paying our neighbors, our friends, the people that uh, populate the state of Connecticut, a uh, wage that allows them to take care of their families. Just, just to clarify on um, the threshold, you mean the, raising the $400,000? Yes. because we raised it once. And, you know, and I think it was a good deal that we raised it once. I do think that we need to take a look at what kind of projects you're talking about that you can do for 400000 and under, which are not many in this day and age. So raising that threshold, I'm not going to be opposed to raising the threshold. But when you get into a project that's several million dollars, then I think, you know, we're looking at where the prevailing wage is something that I support. All right. They, uh uh, Mr. Mr. Mullane, you were a longtime first selectman in North Stonington. Um, your position on the prevailing wage, whether you support it, whether it needs to be changed, your turn. Prevailing wage no longer guarantees anybody. The person who gets the job can be union or non-union. They can be in state or out of state. And then we have to live with the other issue, where is you have to take the low bidder. In many occasions, the low bidder is not the good deal. I'll go back to 1995. We had a school project. Premier Builder, okay, committed suicide, went bankrupt, and we had to call the bond. When they called the bond, we end up getting the same contractor back who did the bad work and didn't finish it to finish it. Since then, I've had other jobs that went out on prevailing wage and failed. There's no guarantee because it's prevailing wage and the low bidder that you're going to get a good deal. And let me get to the other point that you talked about, the minimum wage. The solution to that is to have a good economy. We do not have a good economy in Connecticut. We have very restrictive business laws, and we have things like prevailing wage that make it very difficult to do work in Connecticut. I would rather take, eliminate prevailing wage and hope with the amount of money we save, which would be enormous. Estimated uh, savings at 10% on the school project of t our share, 20 million would be uh, $2 million, and the state share, 1.8. That money could be spent on another project and keep people working on other work all year round. I'd rather have a thriving economy that answers and allows progression between whatever the minimum wage is to be able to progress and growth. Without growth, and Connecticut has not had nebulous growth since 1970. And if you don't have an economy and a growth in the economy and a growth in the population, you're stagnant. 
it doesn't work. And prevailing wage no longer has any value. At one time, its intent was to guarantee there would be a high quality. That's no longer a guarantee, and it's no longer what's happening. And could you now, could you clarify on the other issue you raised? On you say that uh, you're obligated now to take low bid. Would would you change those regulations as well? Uh, I think I would go a different process. I'd ask people who are going to bid in Connecticut to, to go through a screening like DOT where they have acceptable qualified contractors so you know who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. There, there has to be a review of the bid, but I reluctantly have taken a blind bid once, never knew them, couldn't research them much, but they had state contracts. They failed terribly. They put in a pipe 500 foot long, and then they, because they put it in on a pitch, they drilled holes through it, through it, and to try to get it to drain that way it didn't work. We ended up with a very confrontational, and ended up in arbitration. And arbitration doesn't work any longer either. They just split the baby. So I, I think the business of climate, get rid of prevailing wage has no value. I think the big thing is to improve Connecticut's economy so we have so much work, it's not a problem. All right, I'm gonna to go to the next question because it seems like the positions there were quite quite clear on that particular issue. So we'll go to next question, Mr. Wojcic, and it's to Mr. Mullane. 